All right, let's see. Do we have any new comments? Ooh, what's this? God, please finish this video. Uh, that means I have to watch the rest of it. Number seven, triangles. If you walk 10,000 kilometers straight along the Earth's surface, turn 90 degrees to your right, walk 10,000 kilometers more, turn right again and walk another 10,000 kilometers, you'll be back to where you started, having successfully made a triangle with three 90 degree angles. As any geometry student can tell you, this is impossible on a flat surface. It's hard to know even where to begin here. This is so silly that I'm surprised they even included this. First, they told you, if you go back and watch it again, to start out, walk one direction, 10,000 kilometers, turn 90 degrees, walk another 10,000 kilometers, uh, turn again, except they don't tell you 90 degrees anywhere, they just tell you make a right turn again. Do you see the little squares at the corners of the triangles here? Well, those are used to note that it's a 90 degree angle. And I know that math and geometry are not your best subjects, especially because they disprove your flat earth so completely that you have to pretend as if they don't exist. But that's what those symbols mean. So when they say that you turn 90 degrees and then you turn right again, they're saying you turn 90 degrees again. And that's actually important. The degrees are actually important. You're gonna talk about it stupidly in a second and then I'm gonna tell you why you're an idiot. Uh, and you'll form a triangle, uh, which is impossible on a flat earth because you go back to where you started from. Well, with what they're stating is impossible. Uh, at 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees, what does that give you? That gives you 270 degrees in a triangle. Sorry, that's wrong. How? How can you say that's wrong, that's impossible, when on the very image you are paused on, it shows you a triangle with three sides that are 90 degrees? You know, I often wonder what flat earthers would accept as evidence for a globe earth. And I've often heard that things like pictures, real pictures of the globe would do it. And then I think of people like you who are given a picture of something that isn't even all that remarkable, and yet you refuse to accept it when you are given photographic evidence of it. They made the triangle in front of you. I don't know how you can say this is impossible with photographic evidence, but I guess you are willing to say that it's impossible just because if it were possible, it would prove that your flat earth idea is wrong. So you'd rather just deny the evidence, deny that the evidence even exists. And the other thing is, then they show you, as any geometry uh, person would show you, that uh, a triangle is... 180 degrees, which is correct, which means what they're really saying is make 60 degree turns, not 90 degree turns. So they're going against geometry to start with. No, stupid. A triangle with three sides that are 90 degrees is impossible on a flat plane. It is very much so possible on a sphere, which is why they showed you drawing it on a sphere. A triangle adding up to more than 180 degrees is impossible on a flat plane. It's only possible on a globe. Now, to demonstrate this to you, I actually went to the trouble of making a triangle on a globe. All right, now pay close attention. Here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a protractor, you're going to need a marker, and you're going to need a balloon. You fill up the balloon with air, and then you have yourself a nice little spheroid. Next, you're going to try to make three lines that are all the exact same size and try to make the lines as close to 90 degrees as you can. Now, when you're all done, measure the angles of all three lines. Now, I found that when I added up my lines, I got 90, 105, and 85. And if you add it all up, guess what you get? Not 180. You can do this yourself. So you have absolutely no excuse for not understanding this concept. None. This is something that you can easily do with materials that cost under $5. This is not some expensive NASA experiment that can only exclusively be done at universities or in NASA facilities. I did this on my fucking kitchen table. Now, you go do it before you keep sounding stupid. 
Also, the biggest thing they're not telling you is everything in geometry like that on a sphere is scalable. So you shouldn't have to walk 10,000 kilometers. See, they're giving you a figure that no one would ever do. Would anybody ever walk 10,000 kilometers, turn right, you know, a 90-degree right turn, walk 10,000 more kilometers, turn right again, another right turn, another 90-degree turn, walk another 10,000 kilometers, and end up at the same point? Well, of course not. First of all, you'd never have land that would be uh, any kind of uh, area where you could do that, correct? But it's scalable. You can go one kilometer, turn right, one kilometer, go right, and you should be able to come right back one more kilometer and be right where you started because the whole thing is scalable down, isn't it? It doesn't matter if you take a little golf ball and do that like they did here, pretty much a ping pong ball, or you do it on the earth. It's scalable. You don't know what scalable means, do you? If we pretend that this globe that they have given us here is the earth you will see more or less the distance that you would have to travel to see this effect i don't even know how to explain this to you you are so dumb at this like why do you think that you can do this in one kilometer that's not what scalable means scalable doesn't mean if you do it at smaller distances you'll get the same result you have to scale the whole thing down. So if you had a planet that was the size of a golf ball, you could do this with one inch. If you had a planet that was the size of a beach ball, you could do this with like six inches. You don't understand what scalable is. You are so incredibly done. I don't even want to talk about your stupid experiment where you take a little walk around your fucking neighborhood and one kilometer at a time and find out that it's not a fucking triangle. Of course it's not a fucking triangle. That's not what they're saying. No one is telling you that if you walk one mile and make two 90 degree right turns that you'll get back to the same spot. No one has said that. I don't even know where you get such a stupid idea, you dumb motherfucker. Not a 90 degree turn. They're saying it's a 60 degree turn. 60 degrees, then go another 60 degrees, then go another 60 degrees. There's a 666 six, six again. Boy, it's amazing how many ways they have gotten that to come up. Number six, the sun in general gets lower and lower in the sky as you travel away from the equator, and you can use this to directly measure the Earth's curvature. Pick two places a few hundred miles directly north and south of each other, and at noon, measure the shadows cast by a vertical meter stick at each location. You can use the shadow lengths to figure out the angle between the sticks, and once you add in how far apart they are, you can calculate the Earth's curvature. Okay, guys, this is what is known as a sleight of hand. Here we have the little geometric thing they're using there and as you can see they're using a curved surface did you know that you would get two totally different results using a curved surface versus a flat surface see if you assume a curved surface assume a curved surface not prove it but if you assume a curved surface and do the geometry then you could end up with a 93 million mile away sun Hey, stupid, they're not talking about the distance to the sun. They're talking about the how big the Earth is. God damn it, pay attention. So here's the other really cool thing about their experiment that they're giving you, is that you can try this at any given point, at any given time of the year, on any two points on Earth that are directly north and south of each other. And you will always get the same answer. That is what's so amazing about the proof they have just given you, is that you can do it with you and someone directly north of you, and someone across the globe can do it, and have an entirely different distance between the two people, and you will get the same answer. And this is important, because it means that the test that they are giving you is reliable, and it's repeatable. And you have to remember that part, because what you're about to say completely contradicts the fact that proofs need to be reliable and repeatable. Now... What you're seeing on the screen right now is a must-watch video. Must-watch video. The title is New Proof of a Flat Earth Distance to the Sun. And you are probably not going to uh, be patient for the kind of humor she has. I'm sorry. She doesn't have humor. She's got a brain-dead look and a brain-dead speech. That's not actually funny. And now... 
the fact that you <laughs> you're fucking citing Orphan Red as a source. Oh my fucking goodness. Oh, how much fucking bottom of the barrel. Bottom of the fucking barrel. I'm going to skip most of your part here because I've already made a video about Orphan's Red's video. So you can go watch that instead. And that's the part where it's important that you understand that your proofs need to be reliable and repeatable. And Orphan's Red is not reliable and repeatable. And I demonstrated this by doing her same proof at different distances and finding that I got different answers. Now compare that to the proof that you were given earlier for the circumference of the Earth and how that is repeatable and you get the same consistent answer. Now, I'm going to skip ahead to one portion of your video where you talk about Orphan Red almost entirely because you sound like a sleazy fuck and I find it hilarious. I think she is absolutely wonderful in more ways than one. Uh, she is uh, hot to trot, if you ask me. So anyway, the next one. Number five, the stars at night change as you go north or south. For example, Orion is upside down if you're in Australia. Again, we have another really dumbed down thing. Here I have Orion, which I've placed over the earth. Imagine you're looking up at the sky at Orion and Orion's belt, the famous Orion constellation. And there you are up in Russia, and you're looking at Orion. And from your perspective, you're seeing uh, what would be the top part of the body first, looking down towards its feet. But if you're down in Australia, down in the Perth area there where I have the arrow, you're looking up at Orion, and you're looking at it from its feet. How can that be? The feet come to you first, but up in Russia, the head comes to it first. That probably wasn't the best proof for Globe Earth because it kind of does work on a flat Earth, so I'm going to give you a little bit of credit there. But since the last time I gave you credit, you cocked it up anyway, I'm pretty sure you're going to manage to cock it up again this time. Now, there is a much more uh, conclusive proof for a Globe Earth using the stars, and I'm going to present that to you in a little bit. But first, let's see how you manage to mess up the way the stars move. Actually, guys... Isn't this a proof that these stars are not trillions of trillions of trillions of years, light years away or whatever they say? Now they're up to quadrillion because, you know, this, the, the more we go without any kind of stars changing, we have to get uh, parallax to work in our favor, don't we? I mean, God forbid you can't have any stars change because we're moving billions of miles through the, through the Milky Way galaxy every year. But we don't have any stars ever changed in the sky all the way back to the ancient Chinese. Nothing has ever changed. Amazing. See, I told you we're going to cock it up right away. Stars do change. They do move. And we do, in fact, track their movement. And there's a lot of really fun ways for you to be able to see the way that stars move. But that would involve a little bit of research, which I know is not your forte. You would much rather take what some other flat earthers have told you and repeat it, or just come up with your own bullshit and put it up on the internet and hope that you're right. Now, I did say we would talk about a more conclusive proof using the stars, and here it is. Now, on the planet, if you go to the northern hemisphere, you'll notice that if you look north at the stars, that all the stars turn from east to west in a counterclockwise motion around Polaris and you get this nifty little circular effect and you we can see this in time lapse of the moving stars in the northern hemisphere. If you head to the southern hemisphere you get the exact same effect where if you look south you'll notice the stars turning from east to west once again creating the circle pattern and this time because you're facing south it is actually happening in a clockwise fashion. This is impossible on a flat Earth. At least I've yet to actually find an explanation that makes this happen. Because if you're on a flat Earth like the one that you promote, and you have two people facing south at the exact same time, they are both seeing the exact same thing with the stars turning and in the exact same position, but yet they're not actually facing the same direction or even the same general direction. And I've yet to actually find anybody answer the question on how this is possible. To give you some examples, uh, I know that 
a lot of uh, flat earthers love the uh, planet, the Neve planetarium site. So we're gonna play with it. Right now we are on the north hemisphere, somewhere in the middle of the United States, and we will just make day go night go on. And you can see the stars turn in a counterclockwise fashion. And now we will do the same thing and go to. Uh, the southern hemisphere, we have to find dead south now, whoops, there it is, and we will see this happening in that clockwise fashion. And this will happen anywhere in the south southern hemisphere, not just in one location. And you can try this out yourself. And the reason that I bring up the planetarium site is because this is something that you can try. This is something that if we are being lied to about the position of the stars, anybody who is an amateur astronomer with a $50 telescope could point to this site and say how wrong it is because it doesn't actually match what they observe. So you can actually either tell me that this isn't what we observe, which I've had people say, no, we don't actually see this. And which case, you know, hey, get me video evidence that you don't that when you point to the south and the southern hemisphere, you don't see this uh, or that the stars don't line up. This is a falsifiable claim. You can actually test for this. So I'm going to leave it up to you to test it. And I know you're not because you're a lazy fuck, but at least I am giving you the opportunity. And once again, I'm finding that talking about your sorry, pervy, stupid ass is rather tiresome. So I'm going to put a hold on this video here and we'll get to your last set of excuses the next time.